Hi, I'm Andy Shalal. I'm the owner of Busboys and Poets. We are so happy to have Rock Newman and the Rock Newman Show join our tribe here. We are a tribe. This is a place where racial and cultural connections are consciously uplifted, a place where art, culture, and politics intentionally collide. This is a space to take a deliberate pause and feed your mind, body, and soul. We believe by creating such a space, we can actually change our community, change DC, and change the world for the better. And now, The Rock Newman Show. Good morning, folks, and welcome to The Rock Newman Show this morning. Today, Saturday, November the 23rd, 2013. Uh, let me say before we get into the body of the show today that we have dedicated today's show. You'll see this just incredible face here on the screen. Uh, that is the face of Brandon Carrington Lee. Today is the 10th anniversary of uh, Brandon's transition. He passed away from a very rare form of bone cancer, osteosarcoma. And his parents will be on the show later, uh, Jeff Lee and Tina Lee, to talk about Brandon, to talk about the incredible kid that he was, sort of what his struggles were, his triumphs, and what they've done since that time to try to impact this rare form of bone cancer. I have lost uh, a few people in my family uh, to cystic fibrosis. And I know what it is to, lead, to lose a vibrant teenager. So that beautiful, handsome, angelic face that you see there on the screen, we're dedicating the Rock Newman Show today to Brandon Carrington Lee. We have an outstanding show for you today. Um, in the nine o'clock hour, we have gentlemen that are representing the 100 black men of Washington, D.C. I would submit that in our culture, the most maligned, misunderstood, most denigrated, unfairly, uh, per people in our population of any, any demographic are black men. There is a crisis. And we have three gentlemen here today who are representing, again, the 100 black men of Washington, D.C. They are Prentice Parrish, James Proctor, and Kevin Walter Smith. Welcome to the Rock Newman Show. Right, thank you. All right. In the second hour, we're going to have uh, Karamu Kush, a writer, director, actor. you got to hear this guy. Actually, he's going to be in our third segment of the first hour at 940. Tell all your friends to tune in here. We've got a great show for you today. Sof Sophia Stewart is going to join us at uh, 10 o'clock. She is the person who has been referred to as the mother of the Matrix. Um, obviously, you know, it goes without saying what an incredible movie series The Matrix was, and later on, The Terminator. She's been in the news a lot lately about the battle that she has had with Hollywood, with those who have produced that movie. She maintains that it is a script that was done based off of her work, and we'll get to the bottom of what she thinks should be a fair and just position. Uh, as I said earlier, Jeff and Tina Lee will come in. They, are, they head up the Brandon Carrington Lee Foundation, and they're committed to fighting pediatric cancer through research and doing a great job with it. Then in the 11 o'clock hour, uh, the owner of Busboys and Poets, for those of you who might not know, um, he has thrown his hat in the ring to become the next mayor of Washington, D.C. Andy Shalal will join us. And I, have, uh, I am the chairperson, full disclosure here, quickly up front, I'm the chairperson of Andy's campaign. That will not stop me from uh, talking to Andy and addressing um, some tough questions, uh, checking out what his vision for the city is how he thinks that he may go to the top of the heap from having perhaps less name recognition than anyone else in the race. He certainly is a gentleman, is a businessman, is an entrepreneur who has created a mini empire here with busboys and poets in Eatonville throughout the city, uh, having created a place where all feels welcome. It is his position that he wants to do the same thing for Washington, D.C., to make it a great city for everyone, not on just one side of the river, but 
everyone, every citizen of this city. He wants to make the city a better place for all. We'll talk to Andy Shalal in the third hour. But right now, let's come back to the 100 black men. Let me start out, and any, any one of you that want to jump in first, there would be some that says that if there was an organization called 100 White Men of Washington, D.C., somebody would have some racial, there would be have some a, a, a racial overtone. Why is it okay? And what does 100 Black Men of uh, Washington, D.C. stand for, and what do they do? I'll start out with that. Okay. Uh, Since you're close, you may as well. Uh, thank you. Uh, to answer that first question, I would say my personal opinion is that the historical circumstances between African Americans and, and uh, Caucasian males is com considerably different. Mm -hmm. There are different challenges that we face, di different circumstances that we deal with today, uh, personally in our broader community, that uh, we, as 100 black men, have taken the responsibility for. Instead of looking outside of our community for answers, we've rallied amongst ourselves and said, these are challenges that we want to as men and as leaders of our community step up and address. So, uh, you know, there's no racism involved in that. We accept support from everyone. Mm -hmm. uh, so, James, let me ask you. Um, he says there's certain challenges that 100 black men step up and embrace themselves. And frankly speaking, I'll opine on that. I think whether it's Maryland, D.C., Virginia, North Carolina, anywhere in the country, that the, that the 100 black men organizations that step up, we've known them to be doing a great job. What are some of the, what are the, what are the priority of those challenges? Well, the priority of the, uh, the challenge is to, to go back to your original thing here, is, is we're out here to help in the community. As the education uh, chairman for almost the past decade, uh, our tutoring programs have, have helped all when you hear about Kevin's program a little bit later, you're going to see young ladies of all hues in our program. So the 100 black men are out here helping children every single day, and all children. You know, um, I've had the mayor on. I've had Congresswoman uh, Norton on. We've had um, several people on from city government, all of the uh, mayoral, can most of the mayoral candidates I've had on. And I think pretty much across the board, um, when you look at what is the greatest need in Washington, D.C., just uh, mm -hmm. we just confine it there for just a moment. It is to enhance education to create opportunity. You as the, are, you, are, you, Mr. Proctor, are the director or, or head up the 100 Black Men educational component? Right. Uh, and what are your priorities in that capacity? Well, Right now, my priority is facilitating the, the STEM program that Kevin is going to, going to speak about right now. But in the past, we have done tutoring at school by school. Mm -hmm. We have worked with young men and young ladies. And again, whenever we offered our tutoring program, wherever the school identified a need, we addressed that need with that child. We did not put any precondition on it. We were there to serve the school. Wow. Okay. And, and uh, uh, Kevin, uh, STEM program. First, tell us what the STEM program is. First, uh, STEM stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, and Mathematics. Okay. And uh, you bring up a great salient point about education, um, especially with the kids in the different wards in D.C. Um, education is the key to have students from wards five, seven, or three being able to compete with a student that might attend Sidwell Friends or Georgetown Preparatory. Um, <clears throat> the key critical components of what Science, Technology, Engineering, and Mathematics are, if you just look at the sheer statistics, facts, demographics, in America, um, there is a huge gap between um, the education and, and those areas of minority men and women. Yeah. So there's a exclusion that's going on, which is why you see uh, President Obama and his uh, race to the top campaign. He's promoting um, technology inclusion, and we've started our initiative called STEM the 100 Way, which is all about getting kids who normally would not have access and avenues to top-notch principal investigators, scientists, and researchers to get enriched and edified in the aspects of science, technology, education, and mathematics. That could be anything from uh, biotechnology, computers, coding, engineering, biophysics, you name it. They're getting plugged in, and they're becoming more and more uh, receptive to those what are complex subjects, and they are now becoming more competitive for college. 
but it's a twofold dichotomy. It's not just. Well, let me let me stop you for a second because mm -hmm. you know I, I'm I'm fascinated by you know the the the, the urban kid that mm -hmm. is thought you know to have really fallen behind right. in the education and no in the educational arena right how is it that you get them plugged in what is that process what do you what do you do i'd like for my listening audience right. to understand this is a valuable service that you all provide right. if you can kind of walk us through what the process is all right so um we've partnered with the army's educational outreach program mm -hmm. and the way we came about that is, is a part of one of the benefits of being a member of the 100 black men of greater washington dc is that we're not just speakers we're doers yeah so i personally am a biomedical scientist by trade so I've worked in the Washington, D.C. area, worked across the country, served with the Department of Defense. Um, so I've known several researchers and scientists that I've known over time that have actually helped and gave back their time and mentored students and taught and did some apprenticeships. Mm -hmm. So I came across a, a common colleague in the DOD, um, and we had a sit-down meeting and a discussion. She showed me her program and how it's been running across the country. But even she, a woman, an uh -huh. a Caucasian woman said, we are in critical need of young men and women of color in our programs. Yeah. There's no point in having these types of educational outreaches if we can't plug those kids in. So I simply asked her, if I could promise you two to 300 kids, could you, could you put them in slots for the summer where they can be, get the hands-on training and learn the advanced modules? We made the deal. She said, yes. I had over 500 kids apply within a month and a half. Wow. So, and we have another 1,500 more that are on a waiting list. So it's our goal now to augment that program, to have cells and modules, not just in D.C., but Prince George's County and Montgomery County as well, and even Loudoun County if we have to, to make sure that all the students in the greater Washington, D.C. area are getting shown the same modules that can teach them these concepts that make them competitive. Because the paradigm that these teachers have come up with show it doesn't matter if you're dealing with a C-level, D-level, or an A-level student. Once they're exposed to this paradigm and this didactic, they are then become, within weeks, they become readily competitive and open to learning more about advanced technology and these, these types of uh, uh, educational rigors. But at the same time, the teacher is being enriched as well because they're learning the new modules to yes. teach them the new levels of science. As you recall, in 1996, President Clinton said, he announced the Human Genome Project and said, the way we know science is no more. Yeah. Yeah. is right yeah and the way we teach science has to change as well it's evolved and this paradigm is radical it's revolutionary it's something that could actually be in all the school districts and systems we've had countless parents calling us asking us what did you do to my child they're now turned on they weren't engaged now yeah. they want more i want this in my child's school why is it not there yeah. and that's when we know we've made an impact you know i have certainly have a responsibility to maintain my uh, composure and keep my professionalism. I want to jump across this table and hug you is what I want to <laughs> is what I want to do. Let's come back down to this side here. You know, um, uh, uh, the brother here, a biomedical scientist. Yes, sir. Okay, and your background is? I am uh, a marketer by trade. Uh, got my undergraduate degree at Indiana University, uh, my MBA at Purdue University have traveled all around the country working uh, for consulting firm, for Verizon, uh, for a telecom in uh, Chicago, and now with Sirius XM Satellite Radio here in the district. And um, you guys, obviously, to accomplish what you accomplish, you dedicate a lot of time to this. Now, are these, are these paid positions? Is this volunteer oh, basis? It's a completely volunteer organization. And one of our mottos is real men giving real time. Uh, you know, the dollars are good. And we, we love getting those. But one of the things that we recognized was the participation of black men with black children a lot of times was not present. So uh, we aren't trying to step in and be anybody's father, but we want to uh, provide a positive male role model that they can look up to and we hold ourselves to the highest standard of conduct and professionalism so we want to be good examples for the young men and young women that we work with James and 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 your back if you would tell me tell us about your background and what drew you to to the 100 black men organization okay um, I went to McDaniel College. That's, my, that's where I got my graduate degree. I mean, my undergraduate degree. My graduate degree is from Bowie State University. Mm -hmm. I'm in 
working in IT for the United States Mint, but what drew me to the 100 happened um, around the, um, when we had the Congressional Black Caucus 10 years hold, hold ago. Hold on, you said, you said you're working with the United States Mint? Yes. You ever get tempted? <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you this, when I was working for the uh, Bureau of Engraving and Printing when, we were, when the $100 bill was on, if I was ever going to be tempted was there, but no, I'm never, I'm never tempted. Okay. Yeah, so that's, that's, you know, $32 billion in a day. Uh, yeah. Um, the, the, the bottom line is the 100 black men is, for me, I'm the person that's been the most here the, the longest, to really get down and see the people that are doing the work. And, and if we had an all-star team, this wouldn't even be half the all-star team. And that's what the, the, the thing here is. You're talking about our Tommy Smith program, what we put together, which works as the Olympian Tommy Smith. Yes. Um, unfortunately, we lost a, a, a men, member, uh, Randall Evans, who did our economic empowerment program and had a nationally competitive economic team that he would do. I mean, it's just amazing to be able to work with it. It's just such a privilege. You know, you bring up Tommy Smith, and I want to come back to how, why something was named after him. When you mention his name, it gives me chills. 1968, as the gold medalist and the bronze medalist, he and John Carlos, Tommy Smith and John Carlos, stood atop that podium in Mexico City and held up a gloved black, black fist as a sign of black power, as a sign of liberation, and it reverberated around the world. You guys have named a, uh, a program after him, and I really want to get into that. When we come back, we're going to take a break and jump right back into that. Thank you guys so much for being here. Thank you all for looking at The Rock Newman Show. Call and tell all your friends. We've got a great show today, rocknewmanshow.com. It's going to be rebroadcast tonight on 1480 AM in the D.C., Maryland, Virginia area from 6 to 9 p.m. Be back in a few moments just after these messages. is here and no matter what the weather's like outside you'll find the deals inside here in the beautiful showroom of the all new Pohanka Hyundai in Capitol Heights during their giant markdown madness sale. Smart shoppers know that every new Hyundai in Pohanka comes with Hyundai Assurance and America's best 10 year 100,000 mile powertrain warranty. But why don't you tell them about the markdown sale Joe? I'll be happy to Kim. Folks shop around on the web and you'll see lease payments on a new 2013 Elantra GLS at $179 a month. Today at Pohanka Hyundai $99 a month. That's right a $99 payment on a brand new Elantra. And $89 a month on a new 2013 Accent GLS Automatic. How do they do it, Joe? It must be the volume, Kim. A brand new building, hundreds of new Hyundais, and Pohanka's low payment and easy credit programs are designed to get everybody driving. But you have to get here today. Rush to the giant Markdown Madness sale at exit 13 off the Capitol Beltway. Pohanka Hyundai, king of the Beltway. All financing for a limited term on approved HMF credit. My baby drives a Pohanka. Hello to all my friends in the DMV. I am Rock Newman from the Rock Newman Show. I want to tell you about the MGM Grand National Harbor, the most exciting project to come to the District of Maryland or Virginia in quite some time. You're going to have great fun. Come on down, support this project with all you have. It is going to be wonderful for the area. We're going to increase our tax base. 
We're going to get funding for the police department, for ambulance, for fire, for education. It is really a project that is going to benefit our area. Folks, we want to support in a very strong DMV kind of way this great project from the MGM Grand National Harbor. And now, The Rock Newman Show. Welcome back, folks. Today, again, Saturday, November the 23rd, 2013. I've got three uh, gentlemen representing the 100 black men of Washington, D.C. with us this hour. Karamu Kush is coming up also. In the 10 o'clock hour, we have Sophia Stewart, Stewart, who has been referred to as the mother of the Matrix. She's been in the news an awful lot lately about uh, a lawsuit that she has with Warner Brothers in Hollywood and whether or not... Uh, they lifted uh, stuff from her manuscript to make that movie. What has gone on with the legal case? A lot of that's been in the news. We want to uncover all of it from her perspective. And in the uh, 10 o'clock hour uh, also will be Jeff and Tina Lee of the Brandon Carrington Lee uh, Foundation. Um, they are the parents of Brandon Carrington Lee who uh, uh, met an untimely death at the age of 14 years ago, 10 years ago today. So today is the 10th anniversary of his transition and they will be talking about uh, uh, his time, his life, his struggles, his triumphs and uh, what they've done uh, to uh, fight that dreaded bone disease which took his life and then in the 11 o'clock hour uh, Andy Shalal who's thrown his hat in the ring uh, to become the next mayor of Washington DC is the current owner of Bus Boys and Poets. So uh, tell all your friends to, to, to tune us in and uh, we have some great conversation. You have time to come down to Bus Boys and Ports at 14th and V Street for a great conversation and some great food. But right now, let's get back to the 100 Black Men of uh, Washington, D.C. Before we went to break, uh, we mentioned about Tommy Smith, again, one of my favorite athletes. So not only was he a world-class Olympic gold champion athlete, more importantly, he took a stand as a man. Um, how, what's his involvement with 100 Black Men? He his program, this isn't going to be our sixth year of it. He actually is here as, as one of the officials of the program. And just, to, just a little side note to the actual Olympic itself, the competitors worked within the Olympic spirit to make their point, but it was all in that, in that spirit. And subsequent to that, he's now Dr. Tommy Smith. Yeah. So these are very learned men. So yeah. they, we don't hear what they contributed after that point. So right. it didn't stop there. Sure, absolutely, absolutely. I mean, there was, there, there, there was an annihilation uh, an attempt at annihilating uh, both he and John Carlos. Um, I'll tell you something. I got to know uh, personally through the years. I got to know him fairly well, uh, Brent Musburger. And Brent Musburger was one of his greatest critics. And Brent has never apologized for that. And here on the Rock Newman Show today, Brent, you need to apologize. You need to. You were on the wrong side of history on that one, bro. You need to apologize. So, what is the involvement? What uh, what does he do, and what does his program consist of? Well, again, one of our core emphasis is health and wellness, and we're teaching nutrition, plyometrics year round. That's one of the all stars. Jesse Parker, like I said, is is one of the. I can't say enough good things about him and what he does for the 100 in terms of health and wellness throughout the whole age range. So we'll have 1,500 athletes at this track meet. Tommy Smith hands out the medals to the children. What greater honor can that be than to get a medal from Tommy Smith? A gold medalist, 1968. Yes. Yeah. And uh, just off, uh, off camera, um, you were sharing with me some staggering statistics uh, involving education. First of all, I don't think we could ever talk too much about the educational needs of our kids in our uh, local communities here and really communities throughout the country. Uh, would you share a little bit of that information with us, please? I will indeed. And uh, I'll preface that by saying that uh, the 100 Black Men organization has four primary components that we focus on. Uh -huh. uh, we call it four for the future. Those are mentoring, education, health and wellness, and economic empowerment. Uh, what I'm about to talk about next is from a 
the Shot Foundation report called The Urgency of Now. Mm -hmm. And it provides a 2012 perspective of graduation rates uh, for a lot of different uh, demographic groups. So first of all, the four-year high school graduation rate for males nationally for white males is 78%, for Latino males is 58%, for black males is 52%. So uh, just over nationally, 52% of black males graduate from high school. And, and you know what? To, 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 to perhaps make that statistic more sobering, well, we nearly half of black kids, males, do not graduate from high school across the country. Well, let me tell you this. Uh, here in the district, the graduation rate for black males is 38%. So uh, we're facing a huge issue there. Uh, and that is, another that is, sobering that, that, fact. That, 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 is, that is highly depressing. Uh, that, that, yeah, okay. States where less than 10% of black males are proficient in reading at the eighth grade level, when they're eight, in eighth grade, the statistic, there's 15 where it's below 10% for black males, and here in the district, it's 8%. So we are setting our, our children up, our black males, for failure. If we can't support them in, in getting the basic fundamental edu educational uh, requirement, a high school degree, you know, what are their prospects for the future? So that is why some of the things that Kevin was talking about is so important to us. We have to step up and we've got to change these. Yeah. You know, our future is very bleak if this continues to go on as, as it has. Folks, let me, let me just opine here that, you know, those of you that are watching, um, the Rock Newman Show is absolutely committed to bringing you this kind of information to highlight the good about our community, but also to highlight the serious needs in the community. And when you listen to these brothers here articulate the plight, they're dealing with reality. No one is here to sensationalize anything. But that, what is it, 38% of black males in the Washington, D.C. right now, only 38 are graduating. That's an overwhelming majority that are not graduating, an overwhelming majority that one can predict are doomed for failure. And that is something that must be turned around. I would say to everyone out there listening to my voice, please call a friend and tell them to tune in here to hear this information, but more importantly, get involved. Lord knows if ever the adage that it takes a village to raise a child was critical, this is a critical time. This, we're sending up an SOS here. Um, you guys have, and speaking of supporting and helping, you all have an event that's coming up uh, that's a fundraiser. Correct. And, you know, it's one of the difficult things to do, I know, for, any, for most people is to go out and, you know, to raise funds, to ask for money. When is your event? What is going on at the event? And how can my listeners and those who might support the Rock Newman Show support you? We will be happy to tell you that. <laughs> uh, and to... to talk about this, one of the things that is important for us as an organization is to get our name out there. We do a lot of good work with the kids, but if nobody knows about those things, they aren't going to be willing to support us. So uh, outreach, community outreach uh, is important to us. So on December 4th, Wednesday, December 4th, we've got a holiday party. This is our second annual holiday party that we're doing at the park at 14th, uh, downtown Northwest Washington, D.C. Last year we had, I think it was around 1,600 people attend. Uh, it is free admission all night, uh, compliment, complimentary hors d'oeuvres and cocktails from six to eight. This year we added an uh, incredible addition, a uh, exclusive performance by DC's own Raheem Devon. Uh, and all of this is free, so you can go to... Uh, we need to take our hat. If it's all free, we need to take our hats off to Mark Barnes, who's the proprietor down yeah, there. Yeah, we, we definitely appreciate it. Big props, this. Mark. <laughs> so people can go to uh, 100blackmendc.org. That's 100blackmendc.org to get additional information and RSVP. Again, it's free, but we would like you to, to RSVP. And that's uh, December the 4th. Wednesday, December the 4th. Right, okay. Um, uh, how does one get involved with 
a hundred black men. If you got somebody that's out there watching us here now and they are inspired, what are they, how, how do they get involved? What do they need to do? Well, they need to, to reach out to one of the members and they can come through the website to, to locate with us. We start working with you to, to find out what you are going to be able to contribute. There's an interview process because, again, you're going to have to, to work with us and to contribute. So we're, we're definitely looking for, for more members if you're willing to make the commitment. And segueing off. Volunteers, too. Yeah. Wait, we'll we like volunteers as well. Yeah. Uh, Coming to the website, 100blackmandc.org. Um, if you want to get involved with STEM the 100 way, <laughs> you can uh, send me an email at tech, T E C H, dot chair, uh, C H A I R, dot 100 BMDC at gmail.com. Uh, we're readily accessible. Yeah. Um, so now let me, 100, men, 100 black men in Washington, D.C. Yes, sir. Do you have women involved or no? Serious a, amount um, of yeah. women involved. Yes, sir. Um, for our Student 100 way, um, young women from the Kismet Coalition. Uh, Ladies America DC uh, um, and some and the girlfriend group and some other ladies have all given their time behind the scenes behind closed doors they don't really want recognition they don't want you know accolades they want as many children as possible to be helped they believe in our cause uh, sometimes the women you can tell they fight fiercely uh, when yeah. it's about the children and it's about a cause they believe in and we're just blessed to have as many of them as possible come along in the line and, and join us and not only that but bring their resources and their talents to the table um, we are the 100 black men at greater washington dc but we're for all of dc sure. so um with every great man we need great women yeah. along with us in that fight yeah. so um let me ask you um can you bring to life an example of a, a, a of a child again let's let's kind of stay right here in this area a child that you all had, had that, that you've come in touch with, who maybe, you know, didn't have the best parenting um, examples, who didn't have real aspirations because of whatever their situation might have been, and that you've seen a real change in. Can you highlight an example? You, you can use a name or not. Yeah, I'll, I'll take this. And we all have got stories. We work with. Uh, hundreds of kids each year and are proud to do so. But one that really stands out in my mind is Randall Patterson. Uh, when he was 14 years old, he uh, was out of control, just honestly, and he'll, he'll admit that. Sure. He got in trouble and was charged with assault and malicious destruction of property uh, and was about to, to be incarcerated. Mm. Uh, his lawyer was good friends with our former past president, Marvin Dickerson, and they spoke, and Marvin told him to go to the judge and say, give Randell the option of being incarcerated or participating in our Saturday Leadership Academy program. Uh, obviously, Randell selected uh, to participate in the SLA over being incarcerated. Uh, and his life turned around 180 degrees. Uh, the maturity and growth that we saw in him was incredible. His, he became an A student and ended up getting a full ride academic scholarship to, to Morehouse College and just started this, this year. So those are the stories that we like to, to tell yeah. and hold up as examples of the positive impact that we have on young men's lives and young women's lives. Uh, you know, it, just one child is changed by what we do. We're happy, but we want to extend that that reach and we've got we've got hundreds of stories like that biomedical scientists yes sir what's a biomedical scientist what do you what, what does that mean what do you do well uh, by trade i'm uh, skilled in several areas of science but uh, more technically uh, we deal with things such as stem research uh, stem cell research <clears throat> vaccine development um, dealing with genetic therapies uh, from the human genome project things of that nature specialized uh, also it can be used uh, in the defense world uh, to protect the nation from terrorism, um, disease out outbreak, and epidemiological attacks as well. And what drew what what drew you at some point? You're going along, living your life, doing right. what you're doing, you know. Um, and um, <clears throat> what it was it that drew you to the Hundred Black Men organization? Um, young man, growing up uh, from South Dallas and in, in, in Texas, uh, always being told that I was an anomaly in terms of African American male students that excelled educationally. Right. Um, that drove me to want to 
uh, be, be a student at a historically black college and university. My parents were graduates of historically black colleges and university. Graduated from South Carolina State University, a proud graduate of that. Then came up to Georgetown and got several uh, graduate degrees there. But I was always seen my, as- My man said I got casually, he said I got <laughs> several, several, I got, several, I got several yeah, casual yeah, degrees right. there, okay. But the, tell, the, tell what, which degrees did you get at Georgetown, um, casually? At Georgetown, okay, we say uh, biochemistry, molecular biology, um, and uh, microbiology, as well as biotech, so that's four. So in the eighth grade, yes sir, you was messing up some frogs. You was, <laughs> yes sir, yes sir, I was. So and then what always uh, brought me is that uh, I knew I wanted to do more. And I knew I wasn't an anomaly. I wanted to align myself with like people like myself that had like ideals, yeah. who wanted to lift as they climb through life. And uh, the one thing that drew me to the hundred black men of grace Washington D.C. not just. 100 black men in general, just the history, the genesis of it. Yeah. Something where you're telling me uh, men such as A. Philip Randolph, uh, uh, Jackie Robinson, some of our most noted leaders from industry, professions, entertainment, and a time in history when it was very critical. Well, it's tw 2013, the need is just as critical now yeah. as it was in 1963. Yeah. And to actually be able to be a component in society, to not only excel professionally, but then to reach back and lift others up. That's what drew me. Lift back and reaching others up. That's part of what we hope we can do here at the Rock Newman Show. 100 black men, each of the three of you, deserve a standing ovation. Thank you very much for joining us here today. Okay, one thing quickly, quickly. 18149, that's our CFC number for those of you who are giving charitable giving for DC federal and federal government. 18149, CFC number. Okay, you heard it. Uh, coming up next, we have Kyra Moo Kush, filmmaker, writer, director extraordinaire. Thank you so much, guys, for being here on the Rock Newman Show. We'll be back after these brief messages. <laughs> 